Welcome to the very first build of the Skulk Lands. We are immediately met with a giant castle and an incredible dragon skeleton. I want to go over a little bit about what I have planned for this whole area because this is part of a massive expansion of very many. Like I said, this is the very first build when I want to be surrounded by like 10 ginormous builds all the same scale as this one. So there's a lot to unpack here. So I think what we're going to start off with is the actual dragon. So I think we all know where Skulk comes from in Minecraft. And that's when a mob dies, it produces Skulk. As far as the eye can see, all the way over there, all the way around here, like I said, I want to fill this entire area in with Skulk with different structures along the way. But to uncover this dragon here, you can tell that there was a great battle that went on in front of this castle here as there was a final stand against one of the Elder Dragons. This is only one of the Elder Dragons of this world. We don't know how many Elder Dragons are a part of this world, but we do know that this one was slain and produced an insane amount of experience that flooded the lands with Skulk. Basically taking over train tracks and everything like that. You'll notice that there's parts of the castle that are actually built out of little bits and pieces of the bone into the door is more of like a kind of like a tribal thing kind of like a testament of strength taking down this elder dragon which only knows how bad of a battle that must have been but anyways this is one of the very first elder dragons one of my very first skeletons i've ever built getting into the anatomy of the dragon was extremely fun and very cool one of the focal points of the skulk lands but I digress. Let's get into the bigger focal point of the Skulk Lands, and that is the castle you see behind me. So this is for the mob boss. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's get into it. First, you may ask yourself, what is a mob boss? Well, if you look around, you'll notice that there's mobs all over the place. So the mob boss is actually a boss for moving around and transporting mobs throughout my world. This is where they all come from. And we're immediately greeted at the door by these blazes here. So I've got four blazes here. And they all have like glass panes shoved inside their heads inside of uh, mine carts. So they're not able to see me. They're not able to shoot their flames at me. Let's go over a little bit of the mobs that we have here. Inside the skull of the dragon, we have these skelly horses, which are currently trying to escape here. In the rib cage of the dragon, on our way back over along here, we have two Ravagers that we've uh, managed to get inside of here. But you may ask yourself, how does the mob boss get mobs from point A to point B? A mob train, of course. This is a little bit more of a dark style, gothic style train here run by Ozzy. It's a crazy train that's going to go straight through my entire Mesa, through the Skulk Lands from the steampunk region over there. And I'll show you guys a little bit of this train. This train is my second train that I've ever built in Minecraft. And I'm extremely happy with the way that this turned out. I thought everything turned out uh, absolutely fantastic. But you may notice in the back, there's also mobs being transported throughout the Skulk Lands. So we start off with Sniffers being transported from a different region of the world. Back here, we're, we're immediately gre greeted, greeted, greeted. Yep, that's a word. Greeted with uh, many workers who work this area here in uniform. We have ourselves the polar bears here being pulled in from the Arctic region of our world. Our all lays, which were not a pain in the neck to get in here at all, but fairly easy going from kind of like a fairy land. We'll get into that later. Of course, camels being transported all the way over here from the desert region of the world, which is extremely cool. And this train track, like I said, is going to go straight through the Skulk Lands, but also connect all the way back here to where I'm going to be having my steampunk area. But we'll get into that at a way later date. So let's get into a little bit more of the bigger mobs involved in this build. So aside from not only hearing the fact that there's a warden inside of this castle somewhere, you may even be able to see the fact that we have an elder guardian moved all the way up in here all the way up at the focal point 
of this uh, castle, which wasn't that bad of a move, especially after we did our advancement on how did we get here. But I have also keep the warden up in this tower so it doesn't interfere with anything. But if I do get close enough, I will get the darkness effect. So those are the two of the baddies that I have in here. Um, it was a little bit of an adventure getting the warden all the way up there. Smooth sailing with the Elder Guardian, but that guy actually got me almost. So, you know, fun times. But let's get into the actual castle itself because there's actually an interior to this place with a lot of detail to unpack. So first things first, you'll notice that we're immediately greeted at the door with beacons because, you know, subtle flex, of course. But we go through here, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a thing here, but there's a little bit of a story behind that. I actually used to have an evoker here at one point. Sadly, that's not happening anymore. So now we have ourselves a jack-o'-lantern wither skelly being guarded by two dogs or uh, wolves. My bad. I'm sorry. We'll take a right right real quick and we'll kind of pass through all of this real quick. And you guys will see that the mob train is just back over there. Uh, I have mob heads in this world, which are extremely cool. Uh, we got Amanda over here chilling with every single cat guarding. Our charge creeper that we have up there, up in the cage. He's just vibing. Good old Sparky, you know. Coming around here, we have a skeleton that is named after a mermaid or something like that. Don't really know. Chat told me to name it. But it's got a uh, diamond uh, boots and leggings. And inside of here is like kind of like the main room. So we're immediately Gret. Gr oh, uh, Gret. Uh, we're immediately Gret. That's the second time I've used Gret today, but I'm rolling with it. We're immediately greeted with the fact that we got an apple tree here. Uh, we have our Oogie Boogie. This guy is literally probably about three years old now in the world, which is absolutely wild. We have our gremlins in here. And then we have really cool like murals and stuff like that. So I thought this was a really cool, interesting story to basically paint the warden in a little bit of a different light than being like a bad guy. If that makes any sense, I wanted to make the warden look like it is kind of just more of a guardian of the ancient cities rather than this bad, destructive creature or anything like that. So he's uh, we've got the warden here with his wife and his kids and stuff like that. The second child's all the way over there. Uh, and then you have the overworld up here with like the thunderstorms and the um, wandering traders and stuff like that. Just kind of like looking up, but more of a guardian type deal. Over here, we have ourselves a panda, a worried panda, which actually kind of gets really scared when it starts to thunderstorm up in here, which is absolutely wild. I absolutely love it. We have ourselves the parrots, of course. We must call them pigeons. Uh, we got ourselves a little bit of a mural up there as well. That's supposed to be the out, uh, the end islands. I almost called them the outer islands. These are kind of like the outer islands where we have a bunch of shulkers in here. Actually went relatively smoothly. And then we've got this guy who's just kind of vibing. We have a couple more mobs that kind of kicking around in here. This is Vixby. That's a uh, drowned in there. Coming around here. And we have Blitz. The man himself. The mob boss. Having a stogie on his throne. Just chilling. Making all those sweet, sweet gapples. Uh, being guarded on his throne by none other than myself and the man, the myth, the legend, Zopa with his nunchucks and his fiery blaze. So I thought that was pretty dang cool. Absolutely love that. Over here, we have Railed, who is a part of the nether regions. Wait. Um. Wait. Anyways, we have the nether here. So we have the Bastions. We have the... Basalt area with the magma cubes. We have the, the wasteland up there. And we also have these guys, which I have no freaking idea what's going on with these dudes. But they just kind of vibe, I guess. I've, I've, I've got no clue. But there's Zoglins. Over here, we have a kind of like a beastery kind of deal where we have the wither there. We have an upside down phantom, which I thought was really cool. Essentially over here, writing in the beastery as we talk and... Um, and then we've got Sonic ripping on through. Who knows? Maybe it's like, you know, maybe this, maybe Sonic works for essentially. I don't know. Could be a cool little lore there. Another one of these guys, except this guy's a lefty. Hello, dude. Lefty gang out there. Although I'm a righty, but if you're a lefty, put in the comments. Who knows how many lefties are actually here? 
But I thought this was really cool. And flipping this guy upside down was extremely fun. Uh, because it actually looks like he's constantly flying down. Which is really neat. So, that is the interior of the mob boss. Let's go over a little bit of, like, why and how there's an apple tree in the middle of here. Because I know this is a little bit of an obscure thing that you don't typically see inside castles. So that apple tree actually comes from this build here. This is our seed vault of the world. We built this one up for George, the god of agriculture. And if you guys wanted a complete lore backdrop on George and why George is here and what George's role in this world is, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for some more. And I will most certainly come out with a video for this soon enough. But you'll notice that there's an apple right here. Well... The mob boss was able to obtain this apple so he can grow an apple tree, but we don't know why the mob boss needs an apple tree. Maybe there's a mob in the game that's attracted to apples? I don't know yet, but I guess we'll have to wait and find out what the significance is behind why there is an apple tree in the mob boss, but this is where that apple was obtained, just over here in our seed vault from George... And then the castle in the Skulk Lands is just over here. So obviously this is going to be an absolutely massive build on epic proportions. If you guys want to be a part of this build and actually see the Skulk Lands develop, like I said, there's going to be many builds to come to the Skulk Lands uh, besides just this guy here alone. If you guys want to see more of the significance to, between why the mob boss is here and what the mob boss is doing throughout the world and you guys want to follow along with the lore consider subscribing and potentially even watching the twitch channel as well if you guys want to see where this thing goes i have another ascension that's going to be plopping on over here and that is going to be for Heyman, the god of concrete so we'll see what happens with that with almost thirty-five thousand days in this hardcore world there is endless possibilities and i hope to see you guys in the next video Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you in the next time.